Thank you for clicking play. This is PK of the PK Comic Book 411. Let's do this, all right? This time, instead of by publisher, I'm going to go by author. So what was happening is that I really wanted to show you the best stuff up front, but then by the end, I'm going to lose you. So I'm going to be going back and forth. It's all going to make sense. I promise you. And we have DC physically moving from the East Coast to the West Coast with the Dark Side War. Jeff John sort of jumping the shark. And then we have Secret War still going, though they're releasing all these other titles saying eight months later. So let's start off with Secret Wars by Marvel. Hickman's last stand, if you will. This is seven of nine. And it was eight, but now Hickman needs nine. And quite honestly, this one is everyone is getting ready to go against the False God. That's not deep. But I am missing the Hickman days, and I'll, sh I'll show you why later. What has also concluded is 4 of 4 of Squadron Sinister. I'm very much looking forward to the Squadron Supreme that is coming out, I think, next week and is on my pull list. Um, one thing I've learned by this is that Hyperion, which is the Superman analog over at Marvel, is Argonite. Argonite is the analog to Kryptonite. Did not know that. So that's Squadron Sinister, and something I'd like to point out is that Beta Ray 4 was alive in this one. And Jason Aaron writes a four-part mini that is all about the death of Beta Ray Thor. So that guy, he's alive. This one, the whole story is about him being dead. So I guess in continuity, that one's before this one. Okay. So that is uh, Thor's written by Jason Aaron. Also written by Jason Aaron is Doc Strange. This is number one. And this is number one. And the first thing that comes to mind is just like it's Frank Zappa looking guy who's totally irreverent and is a total womanizer. So like Tony Stark, who's totally been changed now, has been split up into multiple characters and Doc Strange is getting the womanizer uh, part of Tony Stark, the invincible Iron Man. We're up to number two and this is begrudgingly on my pull list. Uh, the art isn't getting me and I was looking forward to a very reverent Doc Strange, which this is not. Jason Aaron. Also writing Star Wars. This is 4 through 11. A little lightning round here. <clears throat> so you have Jabba and Vader talking. Remember, this is in between Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. Then we have Aaron. Come on, man. You write Southern Bastards. It's just, I think he's restrained because it's, it's already uh, in a timeline between Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. So that's number five. We go to number six. No spoilers, but we learned something about Han Solo's family. Number seven, there's an Obi-Wan flashback here, and it really took off the handcuffs of Aaron, and you can tell a really good story because, you know, it was a flashback. Um, he really shows his chops in this one, so I'm getting all excited about it, but yet again... What is it about game collectors and, and, and it's Benicio Del Toro as the collector, but then there's like, like the conductor and the game master. It's all over the place, animated, etc. It enters into Aaron Star Wars in this one. Um, now we have number 10, introducing the Volt Cobra, which is faster than the Millennium Falcon. That is not a cool name. Tell me if I'm wrong. Volt Cobra, Millennium Falcon. You be the judge. Last one was uh, 11, and it's just a bridging issue. Luke's fighting in the pits. So, again, that's not even on my polish. I just keep on pulling it every week. And that's Jason Aaron. He must be writing it over coffee is what I always say. Jason Aaron also writing Southern Bastards. I'm reading this, and I'm going, oh, God, what, what is he doing? He must be losing it, or he's just in a slump. And then I realize, you know what? This crazy one, it's not Aaron. It's not even the same artist. The artist became the writer, and uh, Brenner came in as the artist. Not my favorite issue of Southern Bastards, but why? Why, people? And you know that, if you ever watch my vlogs, this means I haven't read it. This means I have. This is what Aaron was doing. He was putting all of his efforts into the goddamned. Um, again, I haven't read it, but now we know why Star Wars and Doc Strange and... Uh, it's, it's obviously only has a certain amount of pearls in any given week. So, that's Jason Aaron for you. Now, sticking with Star Wars, we have Darth Vader. And that's about to do a crossover between Star Wars, Darth Vader, and Darth Vader down. So, giving Jason Aaron a little bit of reprieve, we have Kieran Gillen. And I'm loving this because the protagonist is the bad guy. And he's getting the C... C... P3PO, 
C3PO that's totally evil and in like a total evil R2D2. Gotta love it. I mean, it's really, really cool. He's doing some naughty things within the Empire, getting investigated and doing like political maneuvers to get out of it. It's really, really cool. I'm liking Darth Vader a lot. Oh, larceny. The trials and tribulations of a Sith Lord, you know. Uh, the investigator is getting very close at this point to Vader's transgressions. And this is uh, Dr. Afra. She's like the uh, right-hand man, if you will. And uh, she's the one figuring out, oh, Luke is over there, and we're going to do this to this guy and this to this guy, so you figure out where he is. Um, it's a great issue. Information brokers, really well written. Um, almost forgive him for Iron Man number 17, which I can't stand, the whole Arno in the bed thing. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Last issue that we have right now, we're up to issue number 12. Things are looking good for our evil protagonist. Yes, sir. And again, the three-way crossover is going to happen soon. Kieran Gillen also writing The Wicked and Divine. This is a storyline that every 90 years, 12 gods come back. And, uh, oh, by the way, this, that's Odin, or Woden with a W. And Woden is like Woden, which starts to Wednesday, and that is like Thor's day. Did you know that Wednesday is Odin's day and Thursday is Thor's day? Knowledge with a K. All right, so we're back. Every 90 years, they get to come back, and they live for two years. So, you know, this is Dionysus has his freaking wild party, crazy LSD party. Um, then Anana starts coming in. Funny Monty Python reference. Um, but the lady on the cover is immortal. It's, it's, a, it's a fun theme, the, and the art is just fitting. It's very top-notch, um, though it uh, doesn't take me away. Anyway, this is uh, issue, God, I need glasses, people. Issue 11 and issue 12 to 17 is uh, volume uh, 3 of the TPB. So I'm going to be stopping this, and I did not see this coming. This was like, okay, all right. That's a big plot difference right there on that issue. So that's Kieran Gillen. Um, also with the Star Wars, we have Shattered Empire. Now this is really fun to see. Uh, there's no Yub Nub song in this one, but this is in between Return of the Jedi 6 and 7, which is December 18th, coming up. So this is actually something that comic book guys and girls will know that other people won't. Because it's literally the journey to Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's pretty cool. I mean, a money grab, but also cool. And that is Greg Rucka, who also, also writes Lazarus, which is an awesome, awesome uh, book. I have the hardcover downstairs, in fact. And those that know me always love Caitlin Kittredge's... Caitlin Kittredge. Yes, correct. Coffin Hill. This is a remake. Greg Rucka. I mean, the same thing with the family genealogy, Salem witch trials, and a cop. I mean, it's almost exactly the same, but now you have a big name, and Caitlin Kirchage is, is now canceled out of Vertigo. So, out of principle, I am not going to get this. How bad of me. Greg Rucka's a great writer, too. Um, all right, so we just went through a couple of different authors there. Now, we will go into some Marvel number ones. This is uh, Uncanny and Humans number ones, and Reader's certainly my favorite character. Uh, it's a very much like pen and paper D&D that you have to rest and have three different levels of spells. And uh, that continues in this, and now they're trying to find Black Bolt's son. But I do want to point out, this is Charles Soule, by the way, that there is a zero. This happened a long time ago. And it's just remember that there's this. This certainly just came out, but Zero is there. And uh, this is what I wanted to see as Black Bolt. You know, you, there's not a lot about Black Bolt just being solo and causing some havoc and stuff. This Zero has it. Um, some more number ones. And what I'd like to say is, would the real Avengers please stand up? So, Marvel comes out with Marvel Point One. In here, you have Contest of Champions, Carnage, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Daredevil, sort of like a, a snippet. I mean, you get all these different ones right here, and it's the beginning chapters of the titles. Okay, cool. You know, see different art, etc. They also put out Avengers number zero in the same vein. So now you have Uncanny Avengers, Avengers, New Avengers, um, and the Ultimates. And the Ultimates, my friend, is the new Avengers of Hickman's world. So this is another sampler, if you will. And then the actual ones are, here you have the new Avengers, number one. 
And this is Sunspot now doing AIM, now doing the Avengers. And I think he bought out the Avengers building. That's what Sunspot did. So Tony Stark is now humble and poor. <sighs> Stay with me. Then uh, we have all new, all different Avengers with the female Thor, Vision, um, Sam Wilson as the uh, Captain America. So, boy, do I miss the Hickman days. When I, was, I mean, it just feels forced. It feels kitty. I'm not seeing what, you know, what are the actual Avengers. Going even into Dan Slott's Amazing Spider-Man, he's the Tony Stark now. He's the rich guy. Um, I think he actually, yeah, he bought the Baxter's building. I'm not too sure if that was in this one. But he bought the Baxter's building, and uh, Johnny Storm's all pissed off. Um, so it was more like a family issue. And this oversized issue, you think it's all about Spider-Man? No, they put Silk in there in Spider-Man 2099, so it's not all about Spider-Man. It's another sampler, if you will. Uh, ASM number two, like an underwater action one. And then here's number three. Yes, this is the one that Johnny Storm gets ticked because he bought the Baxter building. So yeah, Spider-Man now becoming Tony Stark. Then you have Doc Strange being Tony Stark womanizer. And Tony Stark, invincible Iron Man, is actually becoming humble. We're going to get to that later. Um, so we had that, and that was Jerry Dugan is writing another Uncanny Avengers. Let me just double check that. Yes. Jerry Dugan also writing an uncanny. It's so, so, I'm not thrilled. Deadpool is now part of it, um, which was, I was hoping was going to save it, but there's Dr. Voodoo, there's Rogue, there's Synapse, which is an inhuman. It, it, it's not striking me. Would the real Avengers please stand up? Then Jerry Dugan is also writing Deadpool, as he always has. Uh, Deadpool number one right here, um, and now he's funding the Avengers. So I may have been wrong about Sunspot and AIM and Hive. No, AIM. Sunspot bought AIM. And Deadpool is funding the Avengers through merchandise. And so there's several, several, several Deadpools all dressed up as Deadpool. And he's getting all this money from merchandise. And now uh, Luke Cage wants to do a cease and desist letter. So you know, there's a Matt Murdock cameo in this one. It's a bridging title. It's a foundation. Hopefully it all ties together. But with the real Avengers, please stand up. Extraordinary X-Men. There's going to be a new X-Men, seriously, like for the next five weeks, number one. Um, but the real X-Men, please stand up. Now the Terrigen Mist are making the mutants sterile. So now Aurora is gathering everyone for an X-Haven, which then, and remember everything's like the eight months later thing, and it really uh, ties into Bendis's number 600. But before I do that, Jeff Lemire... Also did this, Plutonia. And this is school kids being mean to school kids. I don't, I don't need to see that. It hurts my heart. So, um, Brian Michael Bendis was writing all new X-Men and Uncanny X-Men. And I have two versions of Uncanny X-Men 600. There's probably a reason why it's 600 and I just don't know it. Um, but this is to conclude all new X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men. And it's, it's very, very long time since, you know, well, all the way back to the trial of Jean Grey, and now it's trial of the beast, if you will, and then Cyclops gathers everyone around, and um, magic brings all of the mutants over, and so something happens between this and all the rest of the titles, because, oh, because of what Cyclops did, and another title says, oh, what Cyclops did. So when Cyclops has everyone in front, right here, something bad happens, and that's the eight months later. Not even really about Secret Wars. Get my point? Squinting of brow there. Brian Michael Bendis also writing The Invincible Iron Man. And I'm going to say, this goes on my pull list. I mean, people give him smack like, goodbye, we don't need you on the X-Men. I never liked your writing anyway. But from everything that I've been reading right now, this, this actually, the humble Tony Stark is actually doing pretty well in my eyes. Um, number two, here we go. Taking a chance, putting it on my pull list. Um, and then number three says goodbye to the X-Men and there's really cool art in here um, and actually in this one Doctor Strange was written the way that I want to see Doctor Strange not like Jason Aaron is it's, it's an odd time in Marvel I gotta be honest with you Brian Michael Bendis also writing 
Guardians of the Galaxy, number one. And I thought it was going to be uh, a reboot, but it's not. It's a continuation, but before Battleworld. And the thing is also in here, right? And the, and the thing is in Secret Wars number six that is going to change the universe. It's, I mean, seriously, I'm trying to make sense of it for you, but there's no sense to be made of it anymore. And uh, let's see if that does not go. So here's the real Avengers. It's awesome. It's the best. Al Ewing, big name author. But the Ultimates, Adam Brashear is the Blue Marvel, the, the walking antimatter reactor. And you have Spectrum and you have Black Panther and Ms. America. I don't know about Ms. America, but she's going through portals. And then you have Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. And way in the back, who's that guy? He's going to be part of it. This, this, this one. Yep, this one goes on the pole. It's, it has great groundwork, great action, and it's, uh, this is the real Avengers, if you ask me, since everything is now, Tony Stark's persona has been split out, and Peter Parker is like this dick rich guy, and Deadpool is funding the Avengers, it's, it's all just, I mean, granted, there has to be change. This one, and watch this, Tom King, the ex-CIA uh, operative. He didn't do that many tours, and he wants to be very specific about that. But he reminds me of Roald Dahl, who was a flying ace, became a spy, and ended up writing Willy Wonka and James and the Giant Peach, all those. He just, yeah, I was a fighter pilot turned spy, and I can write really goddamn good children's stories. This is what Tom King is to me. This is easily the winner, the best number one so far, though someone else said Illuminati. I'm going to do that right next. Um, it's the first Marvel issue from Tom King. And it, it's uh, the way that he does this is creepy, cool, and awesome. Uh, almost lyrics. I was about to say lyrics. The dialogue is, is wonderful. If anything, the vision. I want you to remember that one. So, on to Illuminati. I did not like this. And I love the Illuminati, which was the new Avengers, which is really the Ultimates. Remember that now. But this, I'm, I'm dropping this. I think it's a Disney cartoon, but other people love the art. And I said, you know what? It takes all kinds to each his own. Let me look at it again. I looked at it again, and it just reminds me of uh, the, the mermaid, the little mermaid type of... I'm waiting for them to bust into song, brother. <laughs> I just wonder if... The big two shackles the writing because Joshua Williamson is one of my favorite through uh, Birthright and Ghosted. He does Nailbiter and just this, the writing doesn't supersede this crazy type of art for me. Um, yeah, those are the villains. So we'll see what happens. Um, and then we have Warren Ellis. I actually writes some dialogue here. Uh, someone looked at it, hated the art. I said, it's gritty and it fits, I promise. So hopefully that stands and you agree with me. Um, but it could really have been anyone. He started Moon Knight for the first six issues and you could have inserted Moon Knight except for one page. Um, and it's just Warren Ellis writing, you know, a superhero book. I'll tell you what, though. This Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. thing, you have Mockingbird, the Bobby Morris is all over. This is Agent Coulson hiring Karnak. So they're definitely trying to integrate TVs and movies in a way that it doesn't seem forced. They do it very well, but it's sort of, okay, yeah, that's her, that's her, that's her, that's her. I get it, I get it, I get it. So Tom King, Tom King, The Vision, first thing in Marvel. And here, I'm going to go a little backwards here. Here's something I did not know. You have Dark Side War out of uh, Justice League. Now we're into DC Comics. And there's one shots that go through the Dark Side War. And I wanted to trade weight for that, but then at the very end, I took a peek and says, continue in Justice League 46, I believe it said. So when I get my Justice League, which has always been on my pull for two years now since I started re reading comics, I'm, not, I'm gonna be behind. Check it out. I had no idea. Tom King actually wrote the Green Lantern one shot. And it's freaking fabulous. It can actually stand by its own. It's it's heartfelt. And there's a twist at the end. No spoilers here. But it's a kid going through his dad dying and getting consolation from someone. This, dude, dude the guy, just don't give him so many goddamn titles that he runs out of pearls. That's what I'm saying. And that's why I wanted to go through the Jeff Lemire and Jason Aarons and all that stuff. Because they write so much stuff that you can see that Southern Bastards went down and because he's doing his new goddamn and granted it may be a better idea so he wants to do that but just hold it off it's an image title and that's another thing with dc and marvel they have to be on time whereas image they can say wait a minute it's not good enough 
always keep that in mind. Um, so Tom King did this one shot, and sort of backing up, we have the God of Gods, right? So all of us jumping the shark. And to me, mark my words, this is the Black Vortex a la DC. Black Vortex, everyone gets Ubered. Remember that thing? I was like, whoa, look, 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 look. Are you, are you powered up? Same thing is happening now with DC. This is Shazam, and they're changing the acronym, you know, the strength of Solomon and Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, I don't know the M. Well, anyway, they changed it to all different, another pantheon, whether it's Indian or whatever. I didn't look it up. It was very hokey to me. But Shazam is the god of gods, and now the acronym stands for something else. Batman, oh yes, the god of knowledge, because he's sitting on the Mobius chair, which was Antimatter's chair, and this is after Darkseid is dead. So... He's a dick. <laughs> Batman's a dick now. He's a god and a dick. All right. Uh, and by the way, this is the, the one that starts the whole God of Gods, Justice League 45 right here. Um, so it's going to be a God Maker series. And then we have Superman, which is now uh, God of Strength. And he is a uh, super dick. You know, God of Knowledge is a dick. Then this is super dick. Um, yeah, power corrupts is what's going on here. And then we have Flash, um, God of Death because Black Racer and Flash combine because of anti-monitor. Anti it's pretty fun, though. It's jumping the shark. How he's going to get to, like, the DCU and how, you know, Batman doesn't have his, his uh, suit and it's Robo-Batman. It's, I don't know how they're going to get from one to the other, but they have to by, I think, number 48. So there's 46 and 47, and some reset's going to happen. A uh, couple number ones. Actually, speaking of which... This is Batman Superman that is now teaming up with Red Hood, Grayson, and Batgirl because he doesn't have all of his powers. And the Batman, who is James Gordon, hopefully that's not a spoiler anymore, it's James Gordon, um, is in the robo-Batman because Batman doesn't have his memory. Actual Bruce Wayne doesn't have his memory. So yeah, this is actually harkening back to Frank Miller's Dark Knight number four, but because, you know, Time Warner owns DC, they can do the Looney Tunes. Um, yeah. Eh. It's, I don't know, there's some fun parts in this. It's sort of now a, um, a team book now. It's not Batman versus Superman. But here's a little side note. Are you done with finals, right? And you're in college. Are you done? Oh, I'm done. I'm done. And then you'd have one person that's correcting the grammar. Like, what, are you going to stick a fork in me? Yes, I'm finished. So if anyone has read this, Batman number, Batman Superman number 26, think of that because you have a kid saying, oh, you're depowered. He's actually sticking a fork into Superman. That was pretty funny. I like that. All right. A couple of number ones. We have Nova. The father and son is back together. Little twist at the end. And that's being written by Ryan. And then we have Nick Spencer writing Ant-Man number one. To me, it was very Venture Brothers when you had a henchman app, right? Do you want a hench? <laughs> if anyone knows Venture Brothers and knows what I'm talking about, this will this give you a good laugh. Um, on to a couple of DCs. Why I keep on getting this? I don't know, people. I just keep on reading the thought bubbles and girls' romance. I just, I don't, I don't get it. And that's something I have to contend with. Starfire, number six. Deathstroke 11. This is a Monsters variant. I was hoping that he was going to go through each of the Justice League because he fought Batman first, then Wonder Woman, and then Superman. I was hoping to go through, but now it's actually going to go way back to Suicide Squad when he's new Suicide Squad when he sort of screwed him over way back when in Russia. So that's what's, that's what's happening with Deathstroke 11. And then Batman Beyond 6 of 6. Who knew? Did you know? I had no idea. This is uh, the robo bat suit but it's now 35 years in the future and he had to go back in and basically use an old suit because the terry mcginnis suit's all fried and now it's done all those issues of future's end what was it 30 something <laughs> finished in six I don't, I don't know who made that decision but fair enough all right we're gonna do a, uh, we're almost done here we're gonna do a couple of um independence or image i should say is the first one switch by the way is by that Steven Shagigic Croatian guy. And this is apparently another incarnation of Switchblade. And, you know, good versus evil, a continuation from Switchblade. Um, and the art is so much like Death Vigil, it's sort of hard to, like, oh, well, that's, no, it's just the same artist drawing someone different. But I wanted to show you this. Look how big and nice. It's eight out of eight. If I had my glasses, I could, uh, 20, 25 bucks, 24.99. If you haven't read it, um, please do. It's 
It's a family story, but it's about death. And death, well, I should say a death pantheon, a death vigil is the family. And each of them has a special weapon that they are sort of grown into. Um, Steven Sjagajic, the Croatian. TPP is out. Now, Grant Morrison. I've had my problems with Grant Morrison. It's very, very wonky stuff. But you want to see the origins of Santa Claus? <laughs> it's so good. I was... Dan Mora? I guess he did Hexed. This art is jaw-dropping. It you, you get transported. And I'm like, I was writing on a Facebook group. I'm like, Grant Morrison, this is excellent. I'm so impressed. And it's not crazy at all. He hasn't gone Morrison cray-cray. And then I had to go back and edit. I go, uh, I spoke too soon. And yeah, a guy responded like, yeah, last two pages. Oh, boy. This fabulous instant classic. Uh, it's one of six. I would definitely trade weight on this or just get both, and I probably will. I am so happy that Grant Morrison is doing this. Please just don't do what he always does. The third and fourth one just goes crazy. Um, this one was totally awesome. You got the whole story. Anyway, that's Claus, okay? Santa Claus, year one. Another one that totally took me by surprise is this very, very thick $5. This is monstrous. Monstrous, and it's about monstrous slavery, and you, the artistry in here must take a long time, and a lot of love, and a lot of heart. I mean, you can see what some of it's, I mean, the detail on the dress didn't need to happen. That's time and money, people. It's, I'm just floored by the art, and I'm stunned by the story. Um, I'm glad I picked it up. It's an oversized issue, and it's 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 a very good analog to a lot of things that happened in the past of, of human history. Very very awesome. Another number one that comes out, uh, James Bond, Dynamite. Now um, I went through a couple of different publishers. This one being Boom, um, Top Cow, and Image did uh, Switch. Right, and this one is dynamite. I guess has the rights of James Bond, and this has everything that James Bond, you know, the women and the gadgets and the car, and exactly like the new one. But Ian is turning over in his grave because I watched Spectre and I was just this can't get over 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. It did. I don't know why, but it was executive produced by Daniel Craig, and it's so obvious. It's just so obvious. So here you go, James Bond. And it has all the necessary components with Q and, and um, both African American. Side note. Um, so here's another thing. Oh, Money Penny and M R. Excuse me. Um, here's the thing. Ed Brubaker. We all know him from several things. I am in love with Velvet. It's just so awesome. If they just took Ed Brubaker stuff and put it to a James Bond movie, it would totally be better. She's such a badass. I mean, this is what movies are made of. Get the hardcover. Um, that is number nine. We have number ten in this arc. The writer's uh, letter in the back, very interesting. That's why he chose the 70s time period for this. Note that. Uh, first three to four pages, better than any new Bond movie right here. It's like you learn stuff from it. I like to learn stuff from the books. And then we have... Uh, we are up to date with number 10. Hopefully I did that right. No, god damn it. This is number 10. Velvet's on the run. Twist after twist after twist. And now we're up to 11. And I believe that starts a, a new arc next time. Um, she quickly determines she can trust no one. Here's another one that really surprised me. Those that are in the know, they know. I mean, another Remender. Love, hate with him. Everything, Black Science. Dimension Z when he did Captain America is always like a family estranged from normal reality and it's always a family matter and uh, I bet he's gonna do that here again, but the artist put so much time and effort to the back There's there's a Hollywood sign with a reflection. Okay, and I, I looked at him like I actually went to wiki and figured out the height I think it's a thousand something feet. So that means the waters the ice caps flooded in a, a thousand feet of ocean rise that's crazy but that's all that's all from one little hollywood sign with the reflection i'm like that has to be water this is something else i believe it's a one through four um if it is then trade weight on this um i'm getting it so i can let you guys know but um remembers pearls if they go to low or black science um it's this is truly something else this is this is different um tokyo ghost Wow. 
Um, all right, how about something that just came out? Paper Girls, I think number two is out, trade waiting on this. Brian K. Vaughn, he just can do no wrong. I thought it was going to be just women empowerment and um, nostalgia for me because I remember paper routes. But uh, there's a little bit of twist in here, no spoilers. Uh, there's almost like builder's code that reminds me of Hickman's. I think it was, uh, was it Avengers or New Avengers number six? And you had the whole alphabet. Those that know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. But pleasantly surprised. 1988, day after Halloween, Paper Girls. It's, it's very popular just because of the name. But I never like to look at a title and say, oh, that's going to be good because of the name. Here's a weird one for you. Neon Joe is a freebie, the werewolf hunter. He's going to be on Adult Swim, okay? And they just sort of gave it to me. And the only thing I'll say to this is that there's a, a forensic lab, and you see the mi <laughs> microscope, and you have the baggie that's labeled. He's picking out a piece of hair, and it's in huge letters, werewolf pubes. That's this one. You know, breadth, breadth of knowledge. Another sort of funky one is... Scotty Young finally has his own title after drawing for everyone else. Gives a whole new meaning to shooting stars. I don't really know why it's uh, mature rated, but, you know, it probably looks like a kiddie thing. But then if you also see this, then okay. Um, I give the recommendation that if you do get Scotty Young's uh, I blank Fairyland, read the letter in the back first. Read the letter in the back first. Know where he's coming from. You sort of have mad press... Plus, Chris Fousley from Ren and Stimpy sort of put together. Um, whether this is going to go on a poll list or not, I, I don't know. But um, it's it's a milestone for Scotty Young, is what I'll say. Uh, real quickly, Clandestiny, which is the Rosh Limit, which I really, really liked Rosh Limit. And this one's awful. It's like Aliens 2. It's finally done. And they're going to go with the, there's a trilogy. So part three is going to start next time. And this is finally done. And there was some good fitting things. And then harken back to the first part of the trilogy. All in all, I would not um, get the trade on that. Uh, Justin Jordan. Everyone knows I love Justin Jordan. Again, another author that spread himself too thin. Legacy of Luther Strode and all the other stuff he's doing. John Flood, what a crit. Here's the tagline. The government made him not sleep. Now he has like waking dreams and he's a really good detective because he can put in connections that other people can't. But he has to carry around a camera and go like, okay, yeah, that's real, that's not real. Okay, that's not real because he never sleeps. Waking dreams. Interesting. Um, I don't know if it's a one through four. No, one of six. Think, isn't that nice that they do that now? To me, it's like, oh, do I want each issue or can I trade weight? I don't know if it helps or hurts them or if we need to support them, but the, I know that there's an entire story that's one through six. I, I'm enjoying this. So hopefully they keep on doing that. From Under the Mountains, I think there's, um, I'm, I'm not too sure, there's like an eight world or something, eight cents, and the comic book store owner uh, recommended this to me. I'm not down with the art, but it was a good foundation. I think they're up to number two, and we're almost done. Um, beauty. Beauty. It reminds me of, oh, it's an STD that makes you beautiful. So then, do you want to get that SED? Or maybe you didn't get it on purpose, but now you're beautiful. And so there's a lot of socio-dynamics that uh, he's playing with here. And this is Gib Gibbons? No, uh, Jeremy Hahn. I've never heard of him. Maybe you have. And this may be a variant cover. But issue number one, SED makes you uh, beautiful. Would you get it? How about the people that can't get it because no, no one will give it to them? Interesting, right? So there's a cover-up, there's an anti-beauty, uh, you know, um, against the beautiful people. It's quite something. Um, hashtag beauty free. So you have actual people, real people that sent their pictures in. Mark Williams of my group is, is also in there. All right, big trouble in little China for the Kurt Russell blonde-haired nephew. It's not true. Um, Fred Van Lent got onto this, I think it was on 13. So, 11, it's still laugh out loud funny. References of a slinky, he's ossified until today. So then that gives Fred Van Lent a lot of stuff to do. Genius about mullets, etc. You know, what they used to do in the 80s, pay phones, whether it just call on a pay phone. And then all of a sudden something just, I mean, you have an 18 ripoff. Um, it's nothing like the few art arcs. It, uh, art gets kitty. Um, it's, there's nothing to it. There's one good like CB talk on, on that issue. 
total art redirection. I think they're trying to revive it. This is one of the first things that's going off of my pull list. Lastly, we have Dingus, Dingus, Dingus Manifest Destiny, which is Lewis and Clark going across the Louisiana Purchase, and it's just like toads the size of elephants. I mean, it's all these weird things, you know, just alternate reality. Um, mutiny on that one. And you have, no spoilers, but let's just say they found a new civilization. Sort of kitty wonky crazy, but it's a new civilization. And then there's some bargaining into it. And it's not hard to see what they're doing because what Lewis and Clark did find in reality is a new civilization. And how did that rapport go, etc. So there's parallels and some thought-provoking things, even though it's a very, very fantasy. It doesn't take a genius to see what they're doing. It's actually a very sad issue <laughs> if you take the parallel and and go to its conclusion. All right, people. PK Comic Book 411 signing off. Thank you for clicking play. I really do mean that. See ya.